video is going to be specifically about how to center clay, how to center a hunk of clay. Centering can be done with huge hunks, with little hunks, but it's all essentially the same uh, sorts of um, hand positioning that you're going to do. I'm starting out with a two pound hunk of wedged clay. You always want to make sure that your clay is wedged. Even if it's fresh off the block, <clears throat> I usually give it a couple of turns because a couple of turns will loosen it and it'll round it and wedge it uh, nicely. Um, you never want to come back with a piece that has holes and dents all over it. You want it to be kind of smoothed out so you're not going to get trapped air. Now I am using a bat, just like uh, my students will at school. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by kind of smooshing the ball down, kind of firmly press it down, and then for my students, I recommend that you seal that ball to the bat. Now what that's going to do is it's going to help to prevent getting water underneath the edge and prevent it from lifting off as easily. Then I recommend that you take your hands and kind of tap it along both sides at the same time <clears throat> and what you're doing is kind of creating it into a little mountain shape. Note, I have not added any water yet. Now I'm ready to turn my wheel on. Now, I apologize for any noise with this wheel. It is a, a motorized kick wheel and the motor can be noisy sometimes. All right, so once I get it up to a nice speed, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the, majoring, the major part of the centering with my left hand. Now, my hand position is going to be to put the emphasis with the side of my left hand and the heel. I make sure that I have water on there and then my elbow is locked firmly to my leg. If your elbow is not locked to your leg, it's going to just be loose and, and there's no way that you're going to be able to be sturdy. So I, you know, lock it however you can, to your leg, to your hip, um, whatever your position is that, that makes it convenient. Now, as I said, I'm using the side and the heel of my, my left hand. I was using my thumb a little bit there just to keep it from getting up too tall. Now, this is the major centering uh, that I'm doing with the left hand. Now, if you would like to do what's called coning, you can go across from it with the right hand. Again, elbows are locked, either to your leg, to your side, something like that. When you cone it, what you're doing is you're putting a lot of emphasis down here at the base where the clay meets the bat. If you don't have that part centered, you'll never get the upper part centered. Now, when coning, I often just tell my kids to just take their thumbs and push it back down, and you can do that a few times. Get my wheel going again here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb, push down, comb, push down. Now, you never want to skimp on centering. If you don't have down the technique of centering, you'll never get a really nicely uh, centered hunk of clay and your pieces will not look symmetrical. So after, after I've coned it a few times, and again, I tell my students coning is optional, but if you are struggling at all with a piece of clay, it does help to align those particles and, and uh, get it centered a little bit more. Now, the last stage, of the centering part is going to be when I make it into, I refer to it as a hockey puck. Um, of course it's not the same proportion, but it's going to have straight sides and a flat top. Now the way that I do this to get that flat sided, flat topped hockey puck shape is I'm going to again use the heel and the side of my left hand. And then with my right hand I'm going to make a fist as if I'm going to punch. Okay. Now I have to connect the left and right hands together. So what I'm doing is I'm making a 90 degree angle where my hands are meeting. Okay, I'm going to be setting the right hand on top, left hand on the side. They are connected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down with the right, in with the left. And you want to get it to the point where it is flat and flat and it doesn't have... Um, uh, like a wobble. Like visually if you can see a wobble or physically if you can feel a wobble you know you're not there. Now this looks pretty good. One of the key things about centering and uh, throwing actually is always use slow and deliberate hand motions. 
If you quickly take your hands off, let's say I'm centering, and I just quickly take my hands off, that happened not because I pushed on it, it happened because I just quickly took my hands off. So I'm just going to recenter that again. Left hand on the side, right hand on the top, left on the side, right on the top. If you see that the wobble is in the side, use more pressure with the side hand. If you see the wobble is in the top, use more pressure with the top hand. But you always have to have them uh, pressing at the same time. The most important thing to remember about working on the wheel when you're throwing is the whole idea is that you are compressing the clay particles between your hands. Now in this case, we're compressing it against the bat, the top, and the side. So by doing this, we are compressing it in three directions, and that's how we get it centered. In a little bit, when we start to open it, we're going to be compressing it side to side, and again on the top with the rim. So you always want to make sure that it's nicely centered before you move on to the next part. Um, sometimes I encourage my students to just close their eyes and put their fingers on it. Can you feel a wobble? Can you see a wobble? That sort of thing. All right, so hopefully that will give you a few little tips about centering. And uh, the next video we'll talk about how to open that piece of clay once you have it centered.